Hi everyone, it's Anurada and we are going live for our, the second part of our sourdough series. And I've been keeping in touch with a lot of you and it looks like everyone got their sourdough starters in the mail as well as some of my little presents. I hope you enjoy them. And uh, my friend also received it in Hawaii today and she just became a grandmother. So I'm very, very excited about that. Congratulations, Rishni. Okay, so let's get started. Jai Shri, it's so nice to see you watching. Thank you for joining. And um, so let's begin. Today I'm going to just review a little bit of what happened yesterday and then talk about two methods today that you can try with your uh, sourdough starter. I just made a couple extra sourdough starters. I got actually five more requests in the mail to send sourdough starters. And um, a couple people mentioned that some of their sourdough starter kind of started, <laughs> with, was really too eager, just getting out of the jar by the time they got it. So I put just a teaspoon of starter in this two ounce jar. And this morning it was completely full, gorgeous, growing, even in the fridge. So. If this comes and it's leaking a little bit, it just means that it's a really healthy starter. Go ahead and put it into the fridge. Okay, so let's begin. So yesterday, just quickly to um, review, I asked you to remove your starter from the two ounce bottle, put it into a bigger mason jar, add a half a cup of flour and a quarter cup of water, give that a little mix, mark that spot and let it rest. And to keep checking it, my hope is that it doubled or tripled. Lalita Chandra, yeah, you came on, that's great. So I got a report from Tulsi Prayer that her starter actually tripled in size. So yeah, it's really fabulous starter. And then um, hopefully you would have removed half of the starter and done that process a second time over. Now you don't actually have to do this double feeding every time you are about to make sourdough bread. This is just because, like I said, it's coming from my house to your house and it needs to get acclimated with the yeast in your area, in your house, the bacteria, etc. right? So my hope is that you've done that now. I mean, if you haven't and you wanna get into bread making, you know, why not? You could, you could try that for all means. Um, okay, so the first method is a very simple method. It requires only one rise. And this method I would recommend for um, those people who want to just get, who just want to eat bread. You know, you want to eat bread, but you want to make sure that it's just healthy sourdough bread. And you don't really care about, you know, this beautiful, burnished, gorgeous, crusty, you know, shell with, um, you know, very light and fluffy and airy on the inside. And, you know, it just kind of crunches in your mouth. You just want bread. You want bread for your children. You want to be able to make sandwiches. You're going to be making bread every three or four days, maybe every, you know, second or third day. And you just want to like get it done, chop, chop, right? So there is that method. And I highly recommend everyone to try this method as well, just to get an experience of how different um, this kind of method is to kind of like the more long, gourmet kind of foody and you know uh, rewarding <laughs> method although I'm sure it's gonna be very rewarding for you to just be able to feed your family um, bread that is um, made with a sourdough starter and with no yeast at all so yeah so the very first step is um, you can go ahead and follow the instructions that I sent you which was I think 500 grams of flour I think it was four cups and you know uh, something some measurement and um, with the water. So I have a pre, I have a pre-measurement over here. So I've already pre-measured the flour and I'm just gonna kind of, you know, rush through some of the, the processes here. So you, you just get a sense of what it looks like and um, you're gonna have to let, you know, the dough rest when I, when I let you, when I tell you when it has to rest, yeah? All right, so then, um, what I like to use always is a nice Pyrex see-through bowl because this gives me a really good sense of how the dough is rising. And it also, I'm able to like, I generally do this, you know, I look at the bottom of it to see 
kind of what the culture is doing. So yeah, it's a very simple method. Go ahead and just, you know, throw your flour in. You probably can't see this. And I think it was one and a half cups of water that I asked you to do. Now, this is what's called a 75% hydration bread. And if you are looking at different websites, and you know, my hope is that you're checking out a lot of websites on sourdough bread, you will find that they talk a lot about hydration, different hydrations of bread. Now, it depends on what flour you are using. And hydration just means the amount of water that you're putting into the flour. So like the way you hydrate yourself by drinking, you know, you're hydrating the flour. So that is what they're calling the hydration percentage. And the more hydration is in the flour, the stickier the dough is going to become. But the stickier dough is actually, um, you need just a little bit more expertise to be able to handle the dough. And um, it, it could get tricky. And so I recommend that you stick with a lower hydration dough. And the recipe that I gave you is just under 75% hydration. So 75% of the total amount um, of the dough is, of the flour is water, right? So this is, you just kind of um, put the water in and I like to use one of these spoons. It's kind of, it comes with an instant pot. It's like a bench scraper. A bench scraper is basically, you know, something similar to this, a hard kind of plastic. And um, it's about, you know, this section and you're able to use it really well. So I'm happy to just use this like this or one of my favorite spatulas. I tend to use the spatula more because of this particular edge. And go ahead here and I just give this, you know, a quick mix. I call this, this kind of like a really shaggy dough. You know, you don't have to, you're not doing any special mixing. You're not putting it through your Cuisinart, nothing. You're just giving it a quick mix until all of the flour is incorporated. And then after all of the flour is incorporated, you are just gonna let this rest. Now, when you're looking at sourdough for the first time, it's so different from making regular bread because it, it just looks too wet to be, you know, any kind of bread. The amazing thing about sourdough is that it is such a transformational bread. Um, the method that, that I was taught by my um, friend who lives in Dallas, my Chinese friend who's an amazing cook, it, it, you know, it's a two-day process and I love it. And, Generally, when I'm feeling really stressed out or you know, I just have too much going on in my life, um, I just turn to sourdough bread. I just feed my starter and I start making sourdough bread because it's just such a healing experience for me to just go through the process of sourdough. And sourdough bread, you know, th this is how, you know, thousands of years ago they are making bread. They're, you know, fermenting, making a culture with just wild yeast and bacteria and uh, you know, putting that to the, to the flour and the water and having this whole natural experience of, rise, of rising the bread. So for me, I really feel very connected you know, to the process because it's such a beautiful long process and doesn't depend on any you know, artificially cultivated yeast. So this is what it looks like. I hope you can see this carefully. So yeah, so it's a very shaggy kind of you know, dough. And, you know, take care to get the edges nicely cleaned up. I really like a clean bowl. bowl. I don't like to see like, you know, ugh, crusty ends of dough. And then you just, you just kind of let it sit. Now at this point, I would cover it with a wet towel or a piece of plastic or something. And this is called the auto lease or the auto lease, auto -lease uh, technique. Um, I would highly recommend never missing this step. Even if you have to just let this dough rest for you know, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, minimum of 30 minutes, the autolyse is just a technique of letting the water and the flour just get acquainted with each other. And this process delivers such a beautiful dough. What happens here is similar to when 
you are cooking grains or legumes and you soak it. You know, it just allows the enzymes to start working, the proteins to break down. It, it, there's a whole kind of magic that happens in this particular resting phase of the dough. So minimum 30 minutes to overnight. So sometimes when I know that I'm gonna, gonna, going to make sourdough bread the next day, I will just go ahead and put my flour and water together and let it sit overnight and it's just doing its thing. So at least 30 minutes to, you know, a couple hours if you wish, um, and you just let it, let it rest with a wet towel over it. So that's auto lies and that, like I said, you know, delivers just an easier, nicer feeling dough. Okay, so then the easy method. So method one for when you want really quick sourdough bread, but you don't care about how the inside of the bread looks. You don't care about open, I mean, I mean, I don't say like you don't care, but you know, it's, you just wanna have bread for your family and you want sandwiches and you want it quick, right? So here's the quick method. So after 30 minutes, um, you go ahead and take your starter that is fed, okay? Not just any starter from the fridge, you would have already planned it to have fed your starter. So here is my starter already, has a bunch of holes. You actually see it a lot better here in the small one. Beautiful holes here. And what I would do is I would use half of the amount. Now you'll find different recipes online with, you know, use, you know, 40 grams or something like that of sourdough starter, but I just go ahead and use, you know, half of it. I just try not to make it too complicated. And so take out about half. Now the reason I take about half or three quarters of my sourdough starter is because um, I tend to, you know, I tend to get distracted a little bit and I tend to forget. <laughs> and um, I, just, I just don't wanna mistakenly put salt in the dough and then remember that I had to have taken out some dough to become my culture for the next time. So I always leave a little bit of starter in my jar. <laughs> it's just like a it's, a, it's just something that works for me. Many recipes say go ahead and put the whole starter and then, you know, take out starter. So I would just recommend always leaving a little bit of starter so that you can um, ensure that you have starter for the next time. Okay, so then I say that you should dimple. <laughs> I love these technical terms in, uh, you know, in cooking. So you're gonna dimple your, um, your starter into the dough. And this just means kind of pressing it in. Now, I used to use my fingers a lot in this because it's, you know, it's so healing. It reminds me of gardening, but you're gardening in dough. Um, but um, yeah, recently I've just been using this, this really great spoon. And so I just kind of dimple it with the, you know, with the spoon, yeah. Oh, Nirakula, it's so good to see you. Thank you for coming on. And dimple it in. Yeah, and because I have removed, uh, because I've kept aside a little bit of culture, I'll go ahead and just throw in my salt at this point. Sometimes when I'm doing like this whole long, beautiful meditative process, I will dimple my sourdough starter in, and then after half an hour, you know, I, I put the salt in, kind of like doing this, these little meditative steps. So I noticed in the recipe that I sent you, I just said put the salt in, and I didn't really give you an exact measurement. So for this particular recipe, I would use anywhere from a half a tablespoon to three quarters of a tablespoon of a, a really good quality salt. And you know, sometimes I, I, I will use a half a tablespoon and it doesn't seem salty enough. Um, sometimes it seems too salty if I go a little bit higher. So I would suggest that you just kind of, you know, figure it out for yourself. So yeah, so go ahead and dimple the salt in. And then I do what's called like a, you know, a pick up and fold. So I just go, go along the edges and come into the middle. 
So I go along the edges, I pick up, stretch, and come into the middle. Keep doing that. And this is also a way that you're gonna be able to structure your dough without actually having, um, you know, putting it on the bench or the table or anything like that. I just find it, you know, after years of just kind of creating a whole, you know, kind of section on my counter where I would put um, flour and then, you know, I'd have my special, you know, bench scraper and, and, and then of course, you know, I'd be left with having to scrape all the dough from my counter and there'd be flour everywhere. I've actually just brought it down to where I completely do everything in my bowl. Hello, Christian Lee, thank you for coming on. And so keep doing this. Now, at this point, I would do this for a good three to five minutes. Now, I know this seems like a lot of work, you know, um, but this is where you are developing, helping the dough develop the gluten strands. This is actually like a really cool scientific process that is going on. And this is gonna look like such a sticky dough and you're like, how am I going to ever work with a dough like this? But don't worry, march on, march forward. You are gonna have a fabulous dough, trust me. This recipe is fantastic. So yeah, so it looks really unmanageable and very sticky. Trust me, you get much stickier sourdough doughs <laughs> to work with that are much airier in the final process. So just go ahead and do this method. So yeah, so you would keep doing this kind of, you know, kind of picking up and folding, picking up and folding, keep scraping the sides of your, your bowl. So for all intents and purposes, let's just say that three minutes has gone by. And simple method number one. So for all the methods, this particular first part is the same, yeah? Simple method, you just want bread. At this point, you take your dough and you put it into a baking, um, a loaf pan like this. You could use, you know, any kind of pan. Um, this is a silicone pan, and I like it because it's really easy, like no fuss. If you use any other baking pan or loaf pan, I would suggest that you uh, use parchment paper. All you do is you place the entire dough into this. Hello, hello, Hari Ramesh, thank you for coming on. You place it into this. You put this into your oven or into a um, nice, dark, non-drafty place. Cover it with a wet towel or some, um, you know, saran wrap, uh, not saran wrap, or like some plastic wrap or something. Um, so just a wet towel just works just fine. If you don't cover it with a wet towel, the tops are gonna dry and it's just gonna become a little funky, you know, at the top. So yeah, so you go ahead and put it in here, put it into your oven and let the magic begin. So that culture is just gonna eat through it it's going to grow, okay? And once it grows to about double the size, now you have to be really careful. You have to make sure that your, your, your baking um, pan is big enough because it's gonna double in size. You, know, if you, don't, you don't want it to actually you know, fall over. So put it in here. Once it doubles in size, very carefully take it out. This could be anywhere from, you know, two hours to six hours. You want to keep checking. And um, and once it doubles in size, take it out of your oven, turn your oven to about 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And once it reaches the temperature, go ahead and stick this in as is, no cover required, and bake it for about, mm, for about 20, five minutes, then reduce the temperature to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and then bake it for another 15 or 20 minutes. And just keep checking that the top doesn't get too brown. Take it out. Everyone's oven is you know, slightly different. Mine seems to run a little hotter. And then let this bread cool completely before you cut it. Sourdough bread does not like to be messed with when it's warm. It's like, 
it's really funny. I always feel like sourdough bread is saying, like, leave me alone, you know, come back later. So it needs to be completely cool before you cut into it. So that, my dear friends, is the first really quick method of making sourdough. It doesn't look gourmet. It just looks like a regular loaf of bread. Okay, so that's method number one. Method number two is, I'm just gonna go ahead and follow my instructions here. And I'm just gonna kind of explain to you a little bit of what it is. So here, yeah, I have here that, okay, so now what we did is that we have this auto, uh, auto lease process going. We've added the sourdough culture to it. We've done this like kind of scrape and fold, scrape and fold for about three to five minutes and we have been letting it rest, okay? So then what do you do? Oh yes, so now after um, about, uh, for a few hours, I'm gonna get it ready for what's called the bulk rise, okay? So then I take it out after it's grown to about double the size and then this is where I look, you know, at the bottom, of course, this is not ready. It'll be ready, you know, in a few hours. Um, and it would have, it would have all these gorgeous, gorgeous bubbles at the bottom. And then I would do the same thing, you know, scrape, fold over, scrape, fold over. And at this point, the dough would be considerably different. I mean, it's going to be this gorgeous kind of um, plump airy dough you know and what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to scrape and actually lift and fold over right scrape lift so you're actually stretching the dough and you're really kind of working those gluten strands and getting those gluten strands to become really long and you know pliable and beautiful and have like all you know the magic happen to what this miracle grain. By the way, I'm using spelt flour. And did I tell you that I just ground the flour? How cool is that? There's my little mill over there, thanks to my neighbor. Yeah, so could I get some applause, please? <laughs> Anyways, I, I love being able to grind flour. So this is freshly ground spelt flour. And um, so yeah, so pick up, stretch, fold, pick up, stretch, you know, kind of fold over and so this is now, after it has grown, you're gonna kind of, you know, do this method and then put it into the fridge for, um, cover it with a damp towel or some plastic and just either you can put it into the fridge and it's gonna do what's called a slow rise because the cold, the coldness of the fridge will just slow down the fermenting process or you're just going to, uh, you know, sit it on the counter and um, let it do its thing. Okay, so then you come to the point of where you have to structure the dough. So what should I do? Maybe I should just go ahead and pretend that this dough is ready and show you how to structure it. So structure just means that it's gone through the initial rise, then it's gone through its big, call, it's called a bulk rise, you know, where it's, it's gone through like hours and hours of kind of figuring itself out as like a sourdough structure. And now you have to get it ready to be shaped, you know? And so this is where you pretty much do the same process. And, um, sorry, that was a call coming through. Pretty much the same process. And here I um, probably put it on my table and use this method with the metal bench scraper. So it's pretty much, you know, I would go in and out, in and folding over all the way. Okay, so that is, I would, I think that the instructions here are pretty, pretty good. Um, this is what I use. This is my, my Dutch, one of my Dutch ovens. Like I said, I use, I usually, do, I usually make two batches, but I would recommend that you make one batch at a time. Okay, and just let me just share with you a few things that I tend to use. I love using, you know, a really good measuring cup. Sometimes I don't weigh things, but the sourdough starter, 
I love using my um, my scale that's very important and this is one of my fun purchases when I structure my dough I put my dough into what's called a proofing bowl but if you don't have a proofing bowl you would just use something like this and that means that after you have done the bulk rise and you're pretty much structuring your dough you would then put it into a bowl like this to get a beautiful shape but before you put it into a bowl like this you would use you know a piece of cloth like this i'll put that into my proofing bowl this particular bowl is called a banneton and this was a gift to me and it just gives such a beautiful um kind of you know it just gives the bread a beautiful shape but before i had this i just used my regular bowl go ahead put this i would sprinkle some flour in here you know put the nice structured dough kind of like the ball in here with the folded side on the top and then cover it and let that sit for about um an hour an hour and a half so just pretty much follow those instructions like i said you don't need a special bowl you can just use something like this very important is parchment paper i never not have parchment paper in my house so i always use parchment paper when i fold it into the um into the dutch oven so that it just doesn't stick comes out really easily and what else oh yeah and i always have a little blade a razor blade and that is to score the top right before i put it into the oven and if you don't have a razor blade you can just use a very sharp paring knife okay so i think that um i think that i've given you just like a really good idea of how to go about with your next step with sourdough this is i'm making this video specifically for those people who receive the sourdough uh, starter in the mail from me i just want to i just want to say that i am i wouldn't consider myself a an amazing baker or you know <laughs> cook for that matter but I am a real foodie and I love to cook and I love to learn from uh, from as many people as I can so what I'm teaching you is kind of my personally curated uh, experiences and recipes etc so you could probably find tons of stuff online um, this is my method uh, this is my quick method. The second method is my quick method. I use a, a completely different method that is more of a meditative method that takes a long time. It's called, you know, stretching and slapping, stretching and slapping every 30 minutes. And that's because I'm just going for like this really, really, like I'm on a quest for the, you know, finest, most burnished, most crusty, most light, most airy sourdough. And it's kind of like this, pride thing you know it's like the quest for the perfect sourdough bread so i i've been using different methods but this is the method i like to share with my friends in terms of a method that is it can give you good results that you can have a decent sourdough bread with open crumb with a with a nice crust etc and um you know have really good results so all of the instructions are on my piece of paper and tomorrow i'm going to come back and um, just do a really short video after this dough has proofed and then just to show you what this dough is going to look like when it's you know pliable and it's beautiful and airy etc okay so um yeah so guy govinda priya <laughs> hi you'd like to see how i transfer the dough from the banneton to the dutch oven that's where you make a mess sure so i'm going to do that tomorrow because this is you know sourdough it has a mind of its own it needs time it's gonna do its thing so i will make the video tomorrow it's very likely that i'll make the video in the morning because i mean i could try to slow down this process in the fridge but um i will definitely show you yes i want to show you how to um you know structure it a little bit so i want to make a video especially for my friend uh, prema manjri in mumbai who asked me this morning so i'll just do a video of me structuring the uh, structuring the dough tomorrow and then moving the dough from the banneton to the dutch oven and sorry and scoring it first with my uh, razor blades or lame as it, as it's called and putting it into 
the Dutch oven and showing you some tips and tricks for making sure that you're very safe because everything's very hot you have to be quick you know so I'll try to figure out a method maybe maybe my husband can help me um, figure it out okay so I'm so excited um, that you guys have your sourdough starter and um, you're on your way to a great sourdough bread if you have any questions just private message me or leave uh, comments down on this thread and um, I still have a couple of sourdough starters that I have to send out due to this you know virus we're not really going out so whenever someone does go out I try to um, you know get in on the air and so those of you who are waiting for your sourdough starter I am doing my best to um, get the starter to you I have it all ready I'm just waiting for uh, someone to do the errand for us and I think that is it I hope I haven't forgotten anything if I have I'll get back it get back to it tomorrow so um, yes good idea Lalita Chandra try to make the first method today very quick and easy method very um, you know quick results okay so um, thank you so much for watching everyone and um, share this video, subscribe, or follow Healing the Heart with Anurada. We just started a YouTube channel and it's very exciting and it's kind of like a whole new um, experience for me. And um, I'm going to be just sharing, like I said again, I'm sharing just experiences that has worked for me that I've picked up from reading or from different people or learning from my teachers, you know, my, my teachers in nutrition and health and healing, etc. And um, and just that have really that I've applied in my own life and have just brought me wonderful success and results. So we we have that YouTube channel just started for that. And um, yeah, if you care to, you know, check it out and see what I have to say there, that would be fantastic. So um, I look forward to hearing from you and thank you so much for watching. And uh, I look forward to uh, sharing the final process tomorrow. <laughs> Take care and this is Anurada from Healing the Heart with Anurada. Bye.